What is up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and in this video, we're going to be designing a bathroom in Cinema 4D using Set Designer. Let's get right into Cinema 4D. Okay, so this is a look at the completed bathroom that we're going to be making today. It's pretty simple. It has a shower with some walls, and it has a cabinet with a sink in it, and a mirror, and a toilet, and a door, and it's using some pretty nice looking bathroomy ArcViz materials. Again, all of this is part of Set Designer, and we're going to build it from scratch starting. Now, so what we're going to do is start with the basics, and that is just a wall here. And this is the set designer uh, type 1 wall. It is a work in progress, but it works pretty well for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it just a wall. We're going to get rid of all that stuff, and that's a pretty good start. And then we're going to take our cabinet type 4. We're going to drag it in right here. And then now we're going to go to our bathroom pack, and I'm going to bring in a toilet, because bathrooms need toilets. And I'm going to bring in a sink and a faucet, and I'm going to attach those, quote unquote, to the cabinet over here. So I'm going to go to the top view. I'm using middle mouse to switch views for people that are very new to Cinema 4D, which is cool if you are. I'm going to put that roughly there, and then I'm just going to position it here like this. This is the kind of sink that sits above the sink. It's not recessed into the counter. So then I'm going to grab our faucet and drag it back here, and we're looking pretty good. Then the only thing we have to change now is take this cabinet. I am going to call it sink cabinet, uh, just in case I start to have more. And what I need to change here is I'm going to close these up a little bit. And all we need is counter controls. I'm going to make an opening, and the opening pops up right there. And it, you can see that it's square, so all I have to do is change the rounding of it and we've instantly made a round opening. And there it is, now we have a sink and a toilet and a wall with some floor molding that's hard to see because it's white, but uh, looking pretty good thus far. So the next step here is I'm going to make a floor, which I just use a plane for, nothing special. And then just place it roughly there. I'm not gonna do any snapping in this tutorial, it's all just kind of roughly placed stuff. So that's looking great, and I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna call it group one wall uh, mirror because I'm gonna put a mirror on it right now and that's just to keep all this stuff nice and organized it's good to organize as early as possible and to finish this wall off for the most part I'm gonna go back to set designer and bring in this picture frame which also works really well as a mirror and I can change its height to be a hundred by a hundred everything is in centimeters and set designer and to make it not a green screen I'm gonna use um, a new PBR material, and I'm going to call this uh, SD mats, which stands for Set Designer Material. That's what I call everything, so I know that they're my materials, and not someone else's. And I'm going to turn off Diffuse, leave Reflection like that for now, turn off Fresnel, and there we are. We have a perfectly mirrored uh, surface, and I'm going to grab uh, our frame, and I'm going to put this where the picture is, and now we have a mirror. So I'm moving kind of quick, but hopefully you guys can follow along. I do, um, I've done a couple of these tutorials, and I'm going to do a whole lot more. So you'll learn this workflow over time for the set designer users. So there we go. I'm going to put that in there. And we've completed our first wall in not too much time. And these will all render very nicely, but we'll be doing some rendering at the end. So let's make another wall here. I'm going to bring this in. Now, this part is a little bit trickier because we're going to add a tub. And I don't have like a perfect workflow right now for making like, you'll see like little inset walls. So I just make them out of a lot of other smaller wall pieces, which is not the best, I don't think. I'm not sure that's like the best workflow, but it's the one that I have going right now. And we'll, uh, I'll show you what that looks like here. So I'm going to bring in our tub. Where'd it go? Here's the tub. All right, and I'm just going to pull it out here so I can tell what's going on. Okay. It's going to spin at 90, and then this wall here, again, we do not need any of this special stuff here. I don't need a window or a door, but I do need it to be quite a bit smaller. So that's in dimensions, and I'm just going to shrink it down using the dimensions uh, attribute there. And we're going to put this tub roughly in place over here. Something like that should be okay. I'm just going to line it up with the crown molding a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. And I could actually take away the crown molding that's, or the floor molding rather, that's down there. But, you know, I think that's going to actually be perfectly fine. So then I'm going to take this wall here. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to bring it over there. Now, 
This would be a problem if I wasn't going to actually change the materials of this, but I will right, at, right before we render. So you can do control, copy and completely fine. And then I'm going to take it one more time. I'm going to put it back here. And I'm actually going to go to the top view, get a little bit more precision on this whole thing. And I'm just, I'm just building walls around this. And I'm sure there's a system that I can eventually build for this that makes this a tiny bit easier. I'm actually going to go a little bit over which should be okay. Um, but for now, it's looking like this. So then I just have to make these little side walls. So I'm gonna hold uh, control again, make another copy of that wall. We're gonna rotate it like this. And then the placement of this is actually kind of important. It's kind of a, it's sort of a hack to make this work, unfortunately right now, but uh, it does end up working out pretty well for this kind of a setup and especially where you're not going to see too too much of the actual wall uh up close and personal you don't really see too much so we're gonna do oops, we're just gonna place it like this and it's kind of a hack because this isn't like a real corner of a room but it'll be okay so i'm actually going to push this back a tiny bit here and this is like the most convoluted part of the whole process i promise like everything else is pretty straightforward but uh that's what we're doing so if I can explain it, it's like we're seeing, it's hard to see with the reflections, the new reflections in Cinema 4D make this kind of difficult, but we are seeing this part of the wall here, but we're going to, we're going to shrink it into the wall so that we only see this part of the wall there, if that makes sense. I know it's, I know this is kind of a weird workflow. I, I'm not super happy with how this looks right now, but or it's actually going to look fine. I'm not, I'm not impressed with how, um, how easy it is. My goal for this whole thing with Set Designer for me and for everyone using it is to make it easy and it and this part is kind of annoying but this is currently the workflow uh, i do for corners <laughs> so there's that okay so we made um two walls one of them has a tub in it and i'm gonna again group them because it does help later on so we're gonna say group a wall with a tub in it and i want to take the tub and all of this stuff right and put it in there i'm pretty sure yeah, okay, so that's all together. And I know that eventually I want this, this, and this. So it's these ones. Okay, they're at the top. They'll get a separate type of material. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do here, I think this is the last thing. We're going to bring in another wall. And there are inside and outside sides to these walls, which you'll see with the textures. It's not a huge deal if you don't, um, if you don't pay attention to that. But it does make adding textures to the walls much easier. So there we are, we have our room and our wall and I'm going to get rid of these windows and I'm gonna open it up. There's a door inside and I'm gonna open that door just to make sure you know that this isn't like clipping into the wall. So I'll put it like here roughly. So we've done our layout, here it is. Here's our bathroom. Oh, and actually the one last thing I'm gonna add for detail is um, the shower. Go to the top. And the shower is just like a faucet and a shower head and a little control and, and you know this kind of stuff adds up over time as you add more details and as time goes on with set designer i'm going to add more stuff like towels and shower um, curtains and, and all sorts of stuff but for now it's pretty basic but every day i'm basically adding stuff to this and i hope to be on youtube making videos for it almost day almost daily as well and going live which is kind of part of the reason I have this webcam it just makes going live much simpler so there's our shower and here is our bathroom laid out very simply so uh, this would actually render fine most of the, the materials are all PBR at this point especially like the faucets and the counters and everything but I want to use some set designer materials to make this look even better so we're gonna go to the content browser and set designer materials I'm gonna bring in tiles hexagon and tiles small rectangle. These are specifically made for bathrooms basically. So tiles hexagon, tiles one, I'm gonna put on the floor and you'll see that they're huge. So you gotta click on the tag and go to cubic that brings them in at kind of like real world scale. And this is a little advanced. So most people you might just get down like this. I am going to go to default diffuse and I'm gonna actually clear out the material there so that they're just white. They don't have any color. 95, I'll make them like almost white. I mean, that's very white, that's like perfect. That's very, very right, white and reflective. So 
the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to wall. So this is the wall with the door on it. This one should go with the tub. I'm going to take these ones here. And because they're all the same, I can select them all at once. And I'm going to change their interior material to the small rectangles like this. So again, with the reflections, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that the inside of these now are tiled like you would kind of do in a bathroom. So uh, very bright. Wow, like super, the reflections make this super blown out, but we have reflective tile on the floor and reflective tile on the walls of the interior. And then the last thing for materials I'm going to do here is a new PBR material. And I'm going to go to... Um, well, first of all, make the reflection lower and make this like 40% roughness. That's fine. And I'm going to make it like a nicer kind of like happier color. Something like that. That's pretty nice. So we're going to grab, I'm going to try to do this right the first time. This wall, this wall. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, this one, this one, and this one. So that will show me that I want... Um... So that is one, two, three, four. It should be four walls. So it's definitely this one. It's that one. And the wall door. So let's do that again. So which ones of these is it? Okay, so it's these two. It's this one, this one, and that one. Okay, so then we're going to change the interior material of that one to green. So there. We're essentially finished with this. And I'm going to save this in case of crashies. Okay. So this is looking great so far. Now this is pretty photoreal. Is there anything else I'm going to do from here? I'm not sure, but uh, eventually with Set Designer on the website, we'll have more things to add to this, like, you know, toilet paper and soap and all the stuff you'd ever need to really visualize like a proper photoreal bathroom. We will have that. I think the last thing I'm going to add is just some cabinets to this. I feel like it could use like a cabinet or two real quick. And I didn't even do that in the dem in the in my testing for this. I did it. I'm just kind of making that up right now, but I'm going to put this here. I'm just going to rotate it 90. Um, going to the top, making sure it's actually against the wall. It is roughly against the wall now. Cabinets like this are usually pretty high. And then now it's up to you, you know, to kind of get more, um, you know, more designy with things. And you can change the materials of the cabinets and stuff if you wanted to. But that's looking pretty nice. So all we're going to do now to wrap this up, I'm going to save is add a little tiny bit of lighting. Um, and not with Cine Designer, and not with any of the Set Designer practicals because they're not available as of making this recording. I'm just gonna do it uh, old school Cinema 4D way, which should be fine. I am using the new physically based light, which basically um, does emulate very closely what I do for Cine Designer. It makes them have the right fall off. It makes them use photometric, um, photometric intensity. And it tries to make them like as realistic as possible, which is what I do in Cine Designer 100%. I try to make the stuff look as real as it possibly can. Something like that looks pretty good. So that's going to be like a shower light overhead, roughly. And then I'm just going to make a room light, like a light in here. And I'll just pretend like it's a little bit larger, so it's a tiny bit softer in, in its... Uh, in its shadow quality, and I think I'm pretty much ready to line this up for a final render to keep this episode as short as possible for everybody. I will call this the shower light, and I'll call this the room light. There. So um, I think actually the, because I've already done this render essentially, I think the room light needs to be quite a bit brighter. like. 2000 which seems too bright here so maybe we'll do like 1800 but the the viewport is really not to be trusted and to show some like really quick settings here we're going to do physical four is for how blurry things are like glossiness essentially shadows is the, how clean the shadows are and ambient occlusion so 444 really safe stuff to do here ambient occlusion we're going to add that only 10 centimeters for how far the rays are allowed to go I know I'm not explaining this stuff, I'm just showing you like the settings I use. Feel free to just copy them until I do my video on render settings for physical. And yeah, that'll render. So this this, this render should take about five minutes. No, maybe a little bit less. We'll, we'll find out. And here we go. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. 
And so that is how we build our bathroom in Cinema 4D using Set Designer. Hopefully that was a cool demo. Uh, I actually just very recently updated all the materials to be PBR materials, so there's no more color channel, there's only diffuse reflectance, which is way more complicated for new people to figure out, but um, more or less if you're using Set Designer, you can just use the materials that we have, that we give you, and everything else will be also coming in at the correct um, at the correct materials. Okay, so this is really bright. Much brighter than my test render for some reason. So I'm gonna have to redo the settings on this. Um, yeah, because this is way too bright. Damn, wow, super bright. Um, yeah, that's the workflow. And at this point, you would typically look dev at much lower render settings, but I thought I had the, the settings all, all dialed in, but I guess I don't. But this gives you a, a good time uh, or a good way of seeing how fast physical renderer works with an AMD Threadripper 1950X. So basically one of the faster and more modern of the CPUs on the market. And physical render is, for better or for worse, purely CPU. So I have two killer GPUs in this computer, but they're not doing anything uh, for this scene anyway. So yeah, we're seeing a little bit of um, a place that I messed up in. Like I let the tiles kind of come through in this wall here, but you know, you guys could clean that up when you do your renders. So that's making this look a little bit funny. But overall, I think this is going to look okay. And what would make it look even better is by putting a person in it, which I'm not going to do in this tutorial. Um, putting a ceiling on it would really help as well as far as letting the light bounce around accurately. And then using the set designer practicals when those are out, that's going to make this look a lot nicer too because then you can see the practical as it's putting out light. And because my practicals are the physical accurate size of like real world lights, it just makes the whole illusion of being photo real better and better. So I blew this out a little bit. This is a little bit too bright. So I should have lowered the light levels of this, but I will, will, I will let this render resolve here um, and flash to it at the end. It's probably also gonna be like the thumbnail of the YouTube video, so you'll get the idea. If you have any questions about this workflow or set designer, feel free to leave them in the comments below or head to the forum, which I will link to in the description below at the Cinematography DB website. Would love to answer any questions or suggestions about the plugin. If you're using it already, Thank you so much for subscribing to Set Designer, and I'm going to continue to add pre-built sets like this, add assets to it, and by the end of like a year of this, I, can, I can't even imagine how big it's going to be. I'm really looking forward to it, and we're going to eventually open this up to user submissions to be able to have other people adding to this or adding pre-made sets that they're using these assets for. Wow, I really blew out the floor, damn. Definitely should have made it darker, but um, but still, it's looking pretty decent overall, and thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.